So I just pray for a God, a work of that God. Whatever is hard and unyielding, Father, let there be a breaking down of it, God. Yes, Master, we thank you. We thank you for this exhortation. We thank you for this instruction to break up the fallow ground of our hearts, to circumcise ourselves to the Lord, to remove the foreskins of our hearts. Yes, Father God, to consecrate ourselves to you, Father God, to receive more from you, God, to receive, Lord, from you, so that our hearts can be prepared, Father God. Lord, whatever areas of our heart that is not prepared to receive, Master, we pray that there will be a preparation even right now as we pray and seek your face, God. Prepare us. Prepare our hearts. Whatever is hard, unyielding. Oh, God, whatever is not right, whatever needs to be consecrated, God, whatever, God, is uh, Lord, insensitive to the leading of your spirit, God, I pray will be there will be change even right now. There will be change in the inner man, God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Master. Yes, Lord, we, we commit ourselves into your mighty hands, Father God. Lord, even as we continue to do this, I pray, God, that, that we will receive a, a rich deposit, O oh God, of your word, Father God. Revelation, understanding, wisdom, Lord, which we have not received till now, God something that you've kept in store for us, God, that we will receive it and walk in it. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, um, I hope everybody's doing fine. We'll, uh, we'll start uh, from where we um, left last class. Last class we looked at um, uh, chapter 7, I think, 7 or 8. Yeah, chapter 8. Right. So we looked at uh, how um, um, uh, sex and uh, sexuality, a very important aspect of uh, marriage, uh, nothing to uh, be uh, you know shy away from, uh, and also it's not a taboo uh, because it is something that is um, uh, designed by God. Uh, it's, it's God's gift. So we we see that um, in in its right place in the right perspective, um, we see that um, you know it is to be uh, enjoyed, and it is for enjoyment. It is for procreation, and, uh, and the way the Lord has designed it so that it can be an expression of uh, commitment, an expression of love, and uh, an expression of affection. Right? So we we saw all that, um, and um, yeah. So just today, um, let's look at chapter nine. Um, oh, before we go there, um, I think for the online class, uh, your uh, the quiz first quiz is uh, is uploaded. I think some of you have already um, answered, right? So just want to request you to go ahead and uh, answer. You have time till Saturday uh, to turn in your uh, submit your uh, quiz papers. So um, it's an online quiz, so you can go ahead and do that. Uh, like this week, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, let me just share the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay. So today we're looking at, uh, you know, the husband and wife. Um, in marriage, becoming a team. Okay, so a very important aspect of marriage. Um, so the thing is that both the husband and wife are on the same side. Okay, it's uh, they are not at opposing uh, ends. Uh, they are not, um, you know, competing with one another. They are not fighting one another. Um, the view of marriage is this: that they are on the same team. Okay, so uh, if one can visualize that, saying, "Okay, uh, you know, both husband and wife are part of the same team. Uh, we are in the same team." So, you know, if 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 you played any sport and if you played, uh, you know, a team sport, um, you'll know, you know, the dynamics of a team. Right. The team is working towards the same objective. 
right? Uh, to win, to practice, to win uh, a game, a tournament, and they're doing everything possible to to harmonize together, to synchronize together. Right? And I'm sure that um, you know we would have seen the effects of um, you know someone just playing for their own. Okay, and I remember when we were in school, I was part of the football team, and um, and there was uh, there was this this guy who was a center forward, and uh, he was brilliant, you know, uh, and he was uh, he was brilliant. He was he was more like a prodigy, you know. He could um, he he could actually win games on his own. So we so we remember that uh, you know. So when he gets the ball. Uh, there's no uh, question of passing to the others, right? He will just take it and he'll go and uh, you know, try to do that. So uh, I remember the coach telling him, you know, you pass it. You know, if you see someone else in a in a very advantageous position um, and is a place there and they can score, you know, you pass it to them. Right? You don't have to take it yourself. Uh, you pass it to them. It's a it's a team sport. Right, so, um, so I, I remember that. So the thing is that we're not going for individual excellence and doing everything on our own uh, and trying to outdo the other, or uh, you know, highlighting uh, ourselves or bringing ourselves into focus. But it is something that you that that uh, we're doing together, right? And uh, so there are many advantages to that, and and definitely. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot more synergy, and a lot more that can be accomplished uh, when we have that in mind. We have that mindset that we are a team. We are working together. So uh, let's look at uh, some of those aspects. Okay, of uh, becoming a team, and uh, what what are some things that uh, that would hinder the couple from becoming a team, right? And and what are the advantages of uh, you know being a team? Uh, and also, what are some of the things that uh, individually one needs to do uh, for the team to function well, for the team to, you know, um, reach its objectives, right? So we're just going to look at a few things um, on those lines. Okay. So the main thing is that uh, there are challenges that uh, everyone faces. There are challenges that, uh, you know, the husband faces, the wife faces. And together, as a team, and as a couple, the ability to face life's challenges uh, together, you know, is um, is definitely more. The ability to face such challenges, the ability to endure the challenges, the ability to overcome challenges, right? So we see that uh, it's not just the strength of one, but it's the strength of two. And uh, the weakness of one is actually swallowed up in the strength of the other. Right. Not everybody has it together. Not everybody has all the skills and abilities. And what could be, uh, you know, a blind spot or something that the husband cannot see, a uh, husband is not aware of, can be something that the wife is aware of, and that can be something that is the strength of the wife. Okay. So, um, so with that perspective, the, the wife is able to bring that into the into the marriage. Right, and it could be it could actually protect the husband. It could greatly enhance the skills and abilities of the husband. It could provide the right encouragement and support that the husband uh, really needs, and vice versa. Right, for the wife as well. Right, the weakness of a spouse is swallowed up uh, because of the strength of the other. So, um, so let's look at. Uh, you know, let's uh, just go on to look at the scripture, uh, which is in Ecclesiastes. Okay. Ecclesiastes uh, 4, verses 9 to 12. Okay. Two are better off than one, because together they can work more effectively. If one of them falls down, the other can help them up. But if someone is alone and falls, it's just too bad, because there is no one to help him. If it is cold, two can sleep together and stay warm. But how can you keep warm by yourself? Two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. A rope made of three cords is hard to break. Okay. Now we know that this, um, sorry, and uh, this uh, scripture is not in, not really in the context of marriage. Okay, it could it's, it is in the context of 
you know any uh, uh, relationship or it's in the context of uh, uh, just uh, collectively you know being able to do more and achieve more okay um, but the thing is we can apply it in marriage and we see that it's um, you know verse 9 what does it say? There's, there's, you know, effectiveness. There's um, a couple can be more effective in facing challenges. Um, the couple can be more effective in um, in whatever they are doing together. You know, they can be. Um, it can be much more impactful, right? Um, so uh, the efficiency increases, and um, and therefore the the measure of success or the the opportunity to succeed. Is more. Okay. Then verse verse ten talks about uh, you know if one fails or if one falls down, there is help. There is immediate help. There is encouragement. So um, you know all of us go through discouragement, and uh, in the marriage uh, scenario, in a marriage relationship, there is encouragement coming from the closest person, one spouse, right? So and it talks about um, uh, support, encouragement, verse 11, uh, keeping warm, uh, you know, not just physically, but also emotionally, like right? companionship, um, you know, uh, this is just the opposite of isolation, right? Uh, which is just the opposite of uh, one being on their own uh, loneliness and all that is actually, uh, is actually, you know, you know um, there's a solution for that here. Yeah, it is rectified. Right, um, and also uh, there is a strength, uh, verse twelve, to resist an attack. It attack if one is uh, alert, uh, if the other person is not. Um, also, there is enhanced strength, uh, increased strength. Um, so the you know the marriage does come under attack spiritually, as also. You know uh, us as believers individually so um with two people you know some of the things that we are not aware of the other person uh, is is able to uh you know be alert and resist and thwart the attacks of the enemy okay so we see this right and the other thing that we um see um one other scripture is matthew chapter 18 and verses 19 and 20 okay uh, which is uh, the power of agreement okay uh, which is really an important thing in marriage and satan tries to really attack and um and bring to nothing this aspect uh you know or, or really um uh kind of weaken this aspect okay so this is matthew chapter 18 and uh, verses 19 to 20. Okay. Matthew 18 verses 19 to 20. So, um, so in the Good News version, this is how it reads. And I tell you more, whenever two of you on earth agree about anything, you pray for it. It will be done for you by my Father in heaven. Okay. So where two or three come together in my name, I am there with them. So if you look at verse 19, it says, I tell you more, whenever two of you agree about anything that you pray for. So there is a, uh, there's a agreement and the power of agreement here. And it's interesting, the word, uh, you know, which you may know already, the word used there, uh, symphonio, uh, it's, uh, it picturizes, uh, you know, from which we get the word symphony, right? So it, uh, it really talks about all the... Uh, you know, maybe you can imagine an orchestra with uh, different kinds of instruments and the percussion and wind and string instruments and, you know, each playing their part um, and each playing, uh, musicians playing their notes and their, you know, their, um, uh, comp the composition uh, playing their role at the right time, playing at the right time, stopping at the right time, you know, so that there is harmony. Okay. Uh, if you... Um, uh, if you look at the New King James Version, right, Matthew 18 and verse 19, it says, Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, okay, so it will be done by done for them uh, by my Father in heaven. So here again, the power of agreement. So we see that uh, Satan really tries to weaken this, 
between uh, you know married couples right so they are not able to come to a place of agreement right um, they're not able to come to a place of agreement and praying you know maybe they are sitting together and praying together but uh, in their hearts um you know they are not really agreeing together because this is not just a very superficial thing saying okay let's agree let's pray but it's uh, it goes beyond that it goes beyond the surface right it's like a, an orchestra playing together it's like uh, you know musicians playing together a team that's playing together uh, and uh, doing things effectively right so there is harmony and uh, there is coordination and uh, it's uh, synchronized well right so so this is the promise of the lord okay and it is the promise to the church and where the lord is saying where two or three are gathered i'm there and if there is agreement and when you pray with agreement i i'm going to answer and there's going to be a release of things okay and if you um, you know if you recall uh, if you're looking at um, uh, i think it's first peter let's let's just go there um okay um first peter chapter 3 and verse 7 right we've seen this before this verse first peter chapter 3 and uh, verse 7 okay. here also uh, we see this instruction husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding right it's talking to how to dwell with the wife giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. Again, so this dwelling with understanding, uh, honoring one another, has a spiritual impact. Right? It's it's not just okay. There'll be peace in the home, uh, or uh, you know, everybody will be in a good mood. Um, you know, there's no unpleasantness. Right? It's it's not just that. So it has a deeper impact. Uh, it has a spiritual impact. Right? So here, uh, Peter is saying that, uh, you know, so that your prayers may not be hindered. And the, which is the same thing, which the Lord is saying that uh, if you agree together and you ask, uh, the Lord will grant. Which means that if you flip it, you know, that verse, if you are not going to be agreeing, then uh, well, there's some kind of a mismatch, right? It's 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 going to be a barrier. Um, so it's going to hinder uh, the prayer. So um, come together in agreement. Okay. So so we see this a very important aspect of uh, uh, togetherness, of uh, agreeing together, and we see that it's um, it's a spiritual. It has its spiritual impact. Okay. So. Um, okay, sorry. Okay, so what are some hindrances? What are some things that uh, hinder the couple from becoming a team? Right. Uh, it's it's good that we know what are these hindrances so that we can avoid uh, and we can be aware of it. Sometimes we don't even know. You know, we, we okay. I'm just doing what I'm doing, and I, I don't even uh, you know realize that uh, uh, something that I'm doing is uh, is a hindrance to the marriage. It's a hindrance to for the couple to work together as a team, right? So it's good that we know we are aware of uh, okay of this very thing. What is it that can actually hinder? Okay. So first thing that we see is self preservation. Okay. What is that? If we are going to put our thing our needs first okay uh, saying that okay uh, self preservation you know, don't uh, we, we need to get it right you know self preservation in the sense that's a basic uh, human um, you know uh, uh, we can't say need or desire but it's a, it's an instinct right so if there is danger you want to preserve yourself uh, so that you can live long you know if there's um, you know uh, your body needs has some needs you want to take care of that so um, that's the thing but if you want to go our own way okay as an individual without the understanding that now you know the two have become one you know we are one entity so if i'm going to focus on my needs 
and uh, if i'm going to you know hold on to that you know sense of individuality very strongly and i'm going to say okay uh, you know this is mine and this is uh, instead of uh, you know having uh, you know this is ours right now that's uh, that's a very important thing you know, uh, to uh, to be able to share you know, in fact if you look at um, you know if you look at the vows the wedding the marriage vows that a couple uh, makes at the altar you know it's like uh, you know um in sickness and in health um in good times in bad times and etc and and um, and you know with, with all possessions and with my body and everything i honor you and you know so we're virtually saying you know uh, basically saying that okay all that i have is yours in fact there is a line like that you know all that i am is yours and the uh, wife also says the same thing you know all that i am is yours so that's the vow that is made and it's and it's beautiful it's all based on the word of god right based on scripture so we're saying that okay we are uh, you know we are a uh, um, our identity is now as a couple and uh, that doesn't mean that my individuality will just disappear no uh, i'm unique uniquely made fashioned by god and god you know truly uh, uh, you know esteems that and all that but uh, the fact is that i have this as um, something which supersedes everything else right so um okay if if you're going to always hold on to okay me i me mine my needs then that is going to hinder us from becoming a team okay so we're not putting the other person first you're not thinking about the needs of the other person we're not thinking about the problems of the other person so every time there could be a challenge you know we're putting ourselves first and saying okay i need to be taken care of uh, and as long as that is done then i'm fine okay. right which is also uh, the second thing which is selfishness right so i'm looking at myself i'm looking at my needs uh, and uh, that is you know that is given more importance than the needs of the other person that's always if that's going to be a trend you know if if there are needs of the other person are not even considered uh, are not even you know given importance are not taken care of right and it's going to be then, then there's no question of the husband and wife working together or living together as a team right it's not it's just that two individuals uh giving importance to their you know their own things their own needs um placing themselves uh, esteeming themselves greater than the other person and it's going to result in a lot of uh, you know a lot of conflict it's going to result in a lot of um, uh, selfishness and everything and uh, we see that that's you know that's going to happen right so um yeah, you know, it, and this can be, you know, in all areas of their lives. It could be maybe uh, of our lives. You know, it could be maybe work, maybe uh, certain things, priorities, uh, everything. Okay, so everything gets affected because of this. We're not able to work together as a team. Third thing that we see is competition. Okay, so if we are competing against one another, now um, you know that's uh, that's another thing, right? Supposing uh, there's a there is a competition where one is trying to outdo the other. Let's say, okay, the husband is, uh, or the wife is earning more than the husband, and the husband feels insecure, threatened, and you know is is trying to, uh, you know, do whatever it takes in order to earn more and be in a better position. Uh, and that's you know so so what is happening here is that uh, the husband is not uh, uh, looking at marriage as uh, or you know it's not even um, uh, celebrating the accomplishments celebrating the fact that why well the you know the wife has accomplished so much and uh, um, and therefore you know there is so much progress in her life and career so the husband is not even you know acknowledging that not celebrating that and instead um trying to outdo the other okay there's nothing wrong in being ambitious there's nothing wrong in giving our best at work and uh, you know bible talks about how in all labor there is reward you know, there is 
reward. So in giving our best and being excellent, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong. But if we are going to do all that, saying, okay, I need to be better than my wife, or I need to be better than my husband at this, then there is something wrong. Right? So that is uh, competition. So uh, so what would happen is that, um, you know, it's like a team that is competing with one another, right? So um, let's say in a game like football, and then the center forward is there, and then he's asking for a pass. He's there, he's positioned in the right place to score the goal. But, uh, you know, uh, the, uh, what do you call, uh, the other teammate, you know, who's probably the uh, right wing or the, you know, the left, you know, he is not passing the ball. Right? He's not passing. You know, saying, okay, every time that happens, he's in the right place to score. And so who loses? The team loses. Right? The team loses. Why? Because there's self-centeredness. Why? Because there is, you know, there's a sense of competition. Oh, I, I don't want that person to do better than me. Okay, so that spoils the relationship, and it's it hinders uh, the couple from becoming a you know effective team. Right? Um, uh, and you know, uh, in line with that is also pride. Okay, pride, uh, and it and it uh, you know it's it's so subtle sometimes. It comes up in different ways. You know, uh, in con in conversations, in uh, in generally in attitude itself, right? Uh, where one person feels that I'm better than my spouse. I'm better than my spouse. And it's a, it's a subtle sense of pride. You know, I'm better at organizing things. I, you know, it's, it's basically highlighting the weakness of the other person. Um, and uh, maybe, you know, it's a, it is a weakness. You know, there's no, that is the truth. But uh, in comparing that weakness with one's own strength, it comes to the conclusion that okay, I'm better, okay. and there's a sense of pride. Okay. Uh, I'm better at doing this than than my spouse, and um, so as a result of that, one begins to talk down, look down, uh, consider the other person as uh, 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 you know as uh, someone who's lower, right? Uh, who's not worth it. So, you know, that's the starting point of a lot of other problems. Like, so, right, okay. And, um, and, and uh, another one could be blaming, you know, this constant blaming. If anything goes wrong, you know, you're just trying to put the blame on the other, okay. If anything goes wrong, uh, maybe, you know, there was uh, something that needed to be done, some bills that needed to be paid, and one person was given the responsibility and, well, was not done you try to find something find some reason and fix the blame or put the blame on the other not really taking responsibility for one's own actions right so so that happens over and over again if that is going to happen you know blaming the other person instead of taking responsibility then uh, well it's going to be a problem we're not going to be working together as a team. That's a major hindrance. Okay. Then, um, see, the thing is, uh, there will be problems. There will be challenges. Okay. So instead of solving, if you're going to focus on the problem, okay, if you're going to focus on the problem, uh, talk about the problem, um, and also complain uh, about the problem with one another, uh, and you know, we're just going to leave it at that. Instead of solving. Instead of looking at it positively and saying, "Okay, now uh, we have this problem. Now, how can we solve it? Okay, what are the solutions? What are the options? Right? Uh, what are the resources? Uh, can we can we work at solving it? You know, what can you do? What can I do? You know, can we you know can we pray about this? Can we solve this? Right? So that that becomes a hindrance. And and this is a small list. I'm sure that there could be other hindrances as well. Okay. So now let's look at, um, you know, uh, um, just a second, sorry. Now let's look at what is it that would make a good um, husband and wife team. Okay. The first thing, of course, is when there is understanding. They understand each other, okay, and they respect one another. They understand their differences. They respect 
their differences. Okay. Now, uh, now the thing is, uh, when we understand one another, we are we are we are looking at uh, each other's strengths. We are looking at each other's weaknesses. Okay, and uh, we are talking about it in a non-condescending manner. Okay, and saying, okay, I know you have uh, these challenges. Now let's uh, let me try helping. Okay, so um, so in a in an honourable manner. Okay, uh, and not in a manner that we are making fun of or not putting down the other person, uh, but saying, okay, these are these are things that um, these are differences. This is how you do it. You know, like for example, one person could be uh, well, could be a very uh, you know uh, you know could be an early riser, for example. Right, there's always an early riser, morning person. You know, a crack of dawn, they are up and about, and uh, you know, but the other person is more of a late riser, you know, um, late night kind of a person. Well, there's bound to be. That's a big difference, right? Uh, and right there, it's a it's a major difference. So schedules, uh, energy levels, everything. Uh, you know, in the sense like this person is ready in the morning, they're ready for conversation, ready for, uh, you know, full on energy, active. Uh, but the other person is just, you know, just leave me alone. You know, I'm still sleeping. I'm still, uh, you know, uh, I'm still not up yet. So, um, so the thing is, okay, this is a big major difference. So, how do we work things out? Okay, uh, to understand one another, to understand the difference, and also to come to a place of respecting. Okay, this is how this person is wired. Now it's going to face some challenges, you know, especially, um, you know, if uh, certain things need to be done. Okay, certain things need to be done together, which requires either waking up early or staying up late. Now, there has to be some kind of a mutual understanding, mutual communication about it. Instead of you know putting down the other person, right? Instead of uh, saying, "Okay, I, you know, I'm I, I'm good at this, I can do this, and you're not good at this," it's just that they are wired a little differently. Okay, so understand each other, respect differences, and then um, support. Okay. Um, you understand the and respect the roles. Okay. Now the differences are one thing, and then the roles are another thing. You know, uh, you can't say one role is uh, less than the other. Okay. They were all playing different roles or carrying out different roles and responsibilities. Right. So the husband cannot say that. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm I'm here. I'm I'm working at the office, and the whole day I'm there, and you know, I'm I, I'm the one who's the I'm who's earning. And it is, you know, you need to um, uh, give that more importance. Um, and you are just staying at home and you're just, you know, taking care of the kids. You know, absolutely no, absolutely not. Right. So you understand each other's roles and you recognize that these roles, these responsibilities, uh, well, they require effort and they re require uh, support from each other. And uh, and also, you know, we're going to look at it a little later. That you know, things happen in seasons. You know, in this season, well, this is a role, this is a responsibility. So we need to support, understand one another. Okay. So when the husband and wife are able to share interests and pursue common goals, then there is, um, you know, there is uh, they're building each other up as a team. Okay. So. What are these uh, share, sharing of interests and pursuing of common goals? It could be in various realms, you know, spiritually. It could be uh, maybe some something to do with studies, uh, academically, uh, intellectually. Uh, it could be something to do with uh, you know, special interests or hobbies or something that they've, you know, in terms of entertainment, in terms of sport, whatever, right? So if they're able to share, that willingness to share and giving them the space and the opportunity, giving each other, you know, that space and the opportunity to share all these common goals, um, then, then, and also to talk about it, and also to be able to pursue that. Okay, um, you know, let's let's have them some. Uh, so that that builds them as um, as, as a team, right? builds the couple as a team. Okay, um, and then the next thing is that when both work. At being good team players instead of individual stars, I think we looked at that. Right? So, so the thing is this: 
um, so what will what will help okay so what will really help in uh, working together and you know, how can it help how can we do it practically you know it's, it's good to say okay i want to be a good team player and uh, yeah but how does that work out practically okay so the thing is this that okay let's find out what are some things that we can do together right what are some common interests what are some common goals that we can pursue together you know it could be serving in church it could be you know a, a sport or it could be something that is at leisure it could be some responsibility you know like maybe cooking or arranging stuff and uh, maybe washing things uh, whatever you know all these are there right as responsibilities in the household uh, there could be other things as well so to find those things that we can that, that the husband and wife can do together pursue together right so in instead of uh, going you know uh, going off on their own that i know it's it's good to give space you know for example one person might be very into reading or maybe into listening to music um or or any other hobby okay while the other person may not be as interested or may not be passionate or completely disinterested as well, right so that is fine you know like we give each other the space but at the same time it's good to share okay these are my interests it's good to share with one another and also it's good to um, you know take that opportunity to learn about the interests of the other okay and do something pursue something together Okay, what are those things? Okay, you give each other the space. These are some things that you can do. That's fine. Okay, but uh, do alone on your own. Uh, that's fine. Absolutely okay. But uh, you know, what are some things that we can pursue together? You know, uh, that there should be some things, right? Or uh, even if one person is not interested, you know, can you learn? You know, can you show some interest? Can you learn? Can you um, do some things together? Right? It's very important. Okay. So then, uh, so you can communicate, evaluate, decide on things, um, and also to be able to, you know, this is a big one, right? To be able to um, give feedback, to be able to uh, say that something is, uh, you know, feedback, good and bad, right? And, or to be able to critique you know some effort or some idea or uh, some proposal some plan okay so the husband says okay you know i think uh, you know this is a wonderful thing let's go you know let's do this let's put some money in this let's do this to be able to receive criticism constructive criticism constructive feedback from the spouse now it's very important right to be able to even consider and see if there is any truth to it you know because we understand that uh, Oh, uh, we don't have all of it together. Like we don't have everything. Like there could be certain blind spots that we are not aware of. So maybe the wife, maybe the spouse is able to, you know, see that, and based on that, say something. You know, it could be in the area of, you know, relationships. You know, like the the spouse, the the other person is saying, okay, something is wrong with this person. You know, please be careful. You know, I know you you want to trust and you want to help and you want to do this, but something I sense that something is wrong. And let's take some time. So uh, weigh those things, right? Give weightage for that, and uh, give uh, you know give that space, give that uh, freedom to be able to give feedback. Okay. Um, so well, this is uh, this is one of the things that we can do. Um, that one doesn't uh, become very defensive and one is not insecure and give each other the space um okay then a, a couple of other things also that uh, you know when you commit to something when you when you do it when you when you constantly don't find excuses or reasons why you couldn't do it but actually you know put in that effort and do it that also uh, helps right uh, to be a good team player okay so when we share each other's strengths, then there is amazing things that can happen as a, as a family, as as a team. Like one person is, uh, you know, strength is maybe, um, you know, maybe one person is very extroverted and they're able to connect with people. 
the other person is uh, maybe slightly introverted maybe they are able to reflect and uh, go deeper and you know um, there's uh, they're able to study the other person the extrovert first spouse you know just meeting everybody and saying hello and hi and uh, well uh, well that's fine they, but they may not necessarily be able to discern to judge um, because their their strength is actually in connecting with people you know but um, the other person is able to you know discern certain things you know these are some things to be careful about um, these are some things to uh, to commit to these are some things that we need to avoid so when you bring those two strengths together then you see that there is that strength is multiplied many times over you know what you do together as a couple is multiplied many times over okay now um, and it can work in ministry like maybe one person is uh, strong you know uh, maybe the uh, the area of calling also um calling and anointing you know each person is called differently anointed differently we're going to look at that you know when we work for kingdom for the kingdom um so how it really helps and how it enhances and and takes the whole thing to another level and there's agreement when there is uh, you know when you're in this awareness of strengths and then when there's agreement to work together uh, it takes um, everything to a whole another level right? and and you see that yes this is what this is how god meant it to be like this is how god wants it to be and you see that satan actually attacks that very thing you know, for the couple to work together as a team you know to keep keep them separate and not just satan but our own flesh right our own flesh our own unrenewed thinking uh, you know our own uh, selfishness and uh, everything that has not been put to death uh, by the cross right uh, we have not crucified it right so all these things uh, really uh, hinder uh, us from becoming a team so becoming a team it's very very important uh, as a husband and wife and um, uh, yeah, we'll take a break now, and this is when we come back, we're going to look at uh, what can be the attitude, some basic, important, foundational attitudes for being, uh, you know, for bringing that into the marriage so that it can be a great team. Okay, so we'll we'll take a break, and then we'll uh, come back.